we omit a sermon today so we can have more of these instructions. But I'll just offer you this one thought about the gospel. There's a lot there. <laughs> especially in today's passage. And I invite you to think about how this parable might be in some way a reflection about how um, those who have abundant resources uh, feel more empowered to take risks, to go out and to produce and to use the gifts and opportunities that they're given uh, with greater uh, freedom. And those who have very little uh, sometimes feel less empowered so to do and to think about uh, the way in which this story might strike us if we think about it as a parable uh, related to uh, how, how resources and gifts are distributed uh, rather than um, how hard one works. Now I invite you to stand and join me in the Nicene Creed, which you can find in your leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated. And now it's time for a word about the creed. The Nicene Creed is a statement of the church's collective beliefs that date back to the fourth century. It is said aloud in many liturgical Christian denominations on most Sundays using nearly the same words. As such, it is a point and a focus of Christian unity across many denominations. However, the Nicene Creed is not a single person's faith written down for all of us to personally adopt. The Creed is a holy document but one written by committee, negotiated in over years and years, even decades of meetings of bishops at a time in the history of the church when Christianity had recently become the state religion. As such, the political leaders felt there needed to be a uniformity of belief among various Christian communities for the sake of good order. For the previous 350 years, there were other creeds, local creeds, that had been used in different parts of the Christian world. These creeds shared some beliefs in common, but diverged in others. For hundreds of years before the Roman Empire legalized Christianity, different local communities of Christians expressed their core beliefs about God and Jesus and the church in different ways. In some communities, for example, the Holy Spirit was not considered a full and co-equal member of the Trinity. In others, there was uncertainty about whether Jesus really suffered and died on the cross. In still others, there were different ideas about whether the Son 
ever existed in eternity before Jesus was alive on earth. In some places, Mary was seen as the bearer of God. In other places, she wasn't because it was felt that she only bore Jesus' human nature rather than also his divinity. These are, seem to us like minor esoteric points of theology, but they argued about them over decades and decades. I encourage you when you have, the, when the creed comes in worship, not just to say the creed, but to pray the creed. Not just to offer it as a pledge of allegiance, but to offer it as a prayer of inquiry. Which beliefs feel solid to you today? Which are confusing or seem incredulous today? Pay attention to your reactions as they are invitations to explore your own personal theology more fully. No person's individual theology will likely match exactly the beliefs in the creed. The creed is not God's word, it's liturgy. We recite it to acknowledge that it is a helpful gift from ancient people, our ancestors in the faith, not as an absolute commandment from God. Much of its wisdom may well still be useful and meaningful to us to describe the divine. Some of it may not. <laughs>